Oh, hello, I'm Marcy Bent. I'm from Think Premium J. And in today's video, I'll be talking about the how to the importance of receptivity, how to open yourself up to receiving. And in today's message, I will actually be sharing a lot of my personal experience and what it's been like for me as an entrepreneur. So with being open to receiving, you create an opportunity for people to add value to you. And, you know, as an entrepreneur, I'm going to be blunt with you. It gets rough. There are going to be times where you can't pay bills. There are going to be times where you can't pay yourself. <laughs> there are going to be times where you're going to be under a lot of pressure and you're going to be really stressed out and, you know, you're really going to be going through it. You need help. No man is an island. No man stands alone. And there's nothing wrong with getting help sometimes. That's a very good thing that people, you know, people feel embarrassed about and there's really no need to be very frank at the end of the day you want to be someone that people can trust and a part of being transparent is being vulnerable is it uncomfortable yeah <laughs> is it something that you probably would rather not do yeah but at the same time you have to put yourself out there because all life depends on rece um, receptivity. All life depends on reciprocity, give and take. If I exhale, I need to be able to inhale, right? Now, if I'm giving, a lot of persons equate being able to give as being in a power position and receiving as you are or in a weaker position. And that's not true. Strong people know how to give and receive. For example, let's look on a simple thing. Taking a compliment. Oh my gosh, that dress is so cute on you. Wow, you know, I had this dress for three years and I wore it to my graduation. And you know, but a lot of people don't really like it. I don't really like it. I gained a little weight and it's not as long as a shot. And nobody else, y'all, and I just say thank you. Man. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of people do that oh you know uh, do you need any help with this no i got it you're clearly dying inside no i got it I, i'm okay i'm okay you're staying at your office until 12 a.m in the morning no i don't need any help <laughs> stop being dishonest and just take the help right and here's the thing with even Jesus as well, he opened himself up. He opened himself up to being able to receive, you know. Like he, there's there's nothing wrong with that. Cause even like look on the story of Jesus feeding the multitude. Don't you have to get the fish and the five loaves of bread from somebody in the crowd? And it even says here in Mark chapter eleven, verse twenty four. Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you've received it and it will be yours. Even Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, it says, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. Ask for what you want. If you need funding for growing your business, ask for what you want. If you need funding to go to, if you need somebody to give you a ride to go somewhere, ask for what you want. Is it going to be uncomfortable? Yes. Do you not want to tell people your business and you can't have to tell people your business for them to help you? Yes. But guess what? You never know who you meet in the process of opening yourself up to receive. Some of my best conversations happened while I was vulnerable and somebody was taking me from one place to another. Some of my best conversations happen while I'm in debt. Some of my best connections, my best relationships came not from friends, came not from family, but came from strangers where I had to get help from. There's no shame in that. That doesn't make you a bad person. That doesn't make you a failure. And, you know, in business, we tend to glorify this image that we see on TV with this overly successful man or woman in a gorgeous suit, super, super high-end car, you know, being able to run their credit card looking fabulous and not realizing that it took a lot of, for them to even get to that point. The ones that made it there legitimately, at least. There were days where they couldn't pay bills. There were days where they probably didn't know how they were going to eat. There were days where their families probably didn't support them. And that's okay. But you have to open yourself up to get help. So even when you're talking to God in prayer, you have to be comfortable in 
asking the father for help. As, and I love this song from Yolanda Adams, this too shall pass. The father knows the tears you cry before they fall. Sometimes some of my best prayers didn't even come where I said a word. It was just me saying, dear God, and just bawling the entire time. And just asking for help. Asking why. You know, seek. I had to seek that help. And God wants to help us, but in order to get that help, you have to open yourself up to receive. And in order to open yourself up to receive, you have to be transparent. You have to be transparent with yourself. You have to understand that, yo, you don't have all answers. I'm making a mistake. I don't understand. I need help. I can't do this myself. Is this something that we like to admit? No, it's not comfortable to say yes. <laughs> Frankly, it is. It's not something I would personally want to say if I don't have to. But the truth is, you kind of have to say it in order to get the help. And even it says here in James chapter 4 verse 3, Ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. So if you're asking and you don't receive, some of the times you have to look on your own intentions as to why you don't get it. Why did you want to start a business in the first place? Were you just starting it to try and be a billionaire and make money? I know I did that. <laughs> That's probably why it didn't work out for like the first three times. <laughs> because I just started it for the wrong reasons. And I asked for help for the wrong reason. I was just trying to make money. It was this, third, this fourth time around where, you know, I put it in God's hands and I asked God, Hey, if this is your will for me, please guide me. What do you want me to to do in my business? Can you help me to fulfill the needs of my heart while serving others? What do you want that to look like? And, you know, God actually helped. He showed me that he wanted me to minister about him through business. And he did it in the most unconventional way. So it was actually a random conversation I was having with somebody in May of this year where it kind of clicked and it didn't click before. I don't even think the person who started the conversation realized the other two persons. But for me, it, it clicked. And I'm just like, yeah, having a business is like ministering about people, uh, ministering to people about God. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> it just kind of happened. But I opened myself up to receive. So you don't want to do that. All right. And, you know, another thing is and even james i'm sorry even john chapter 16 verse 24 it said until now you've asked nothing in my name asking you receive that your joy may be full and that's what happened i asked and i received and isn't it sad that i was a i, I didn't even know how to ask god for help like specific prayers that's a real thing a lot of people don't know and don't be ashamed if you don't know I mean, I'm still figuring out a lot of parts with my walk with God myself. I still slip up myself. I'm still a work in progress myself. And guess what? The beauty of being an entrepreneur is you don't have to start this whole. You can start this as flawed as you are and work on improving yourself along the way. That's the beauty of building a business. You can build yourself up while you're building your business. The whole point is to start and ask for help. Always open yourself up to receiving and you'll be surprised. Some of my best conversations came while I had no money. Even look on um, Paul, for example, Apostle Paul, the one that was previously called Saul. You know, if he didn't open himself up to receiving, he wouldn't have met Titus or Timothy, which ended up being great supporters for him. He wouldn't have um, benefited from um, communities helping him. I'm trying to remember the name. I'm Googling it now. Community that supported him. All right. So you, there's nothing wrong with getting help. Because even, um, even in Gal Galatians, one of the things that people don't realize with the Apostle Paul, you know, he died because... He really didn't get a lot of support. He really didn't get a lot of support. And it's very sad. But, you know, he, he didn't really get a lot of support among the fellow apostles or disciples because he wasn't really there 
when you know Jesus died and such, and he really didn't get. And plus, you know, he persecuted Christians. We do have to remember that. And you know, he never got any support from the people who he ditched because you know he was persecuting Christians. He was a Pharisee after all, right? And you know, in many eras, he still didn't get a lot of support there either. Like he really went through a lot. But he was a very educated man, and he wrote like thirteen different books in the New Testament. You know, his case actually proves the importance of reciprocity because if he had gotten support, he probably wouldn't have died. Because, I mean, he, let's face it, he went through a lot of fights. I think he got, <laughs> what's it, what, he got like whipped 26 times by one group, 13 times by another. Um, He was ostracized. He, he was in shipwrecked. A few times he was in prison once. Like, he went through a lot, lot. And he really didn't get a lot of support. God bless the few people that helped him. But many people didn't. And, you know, in business, as a business owner, a lot of times it feels that way. Yet our work can help a lot of people. Isn't that funny? So you, you want to ensure that you open yourself up to get help. Because having a business is hard takes a lot out of you and you have a business but your business owns you let nobody tell you otherwise you don't own your business you own your business on paper that's cute you put it up on your picture frame and i hope you feel very great about yourself but you really don't own your business your business owns you a good portion of your life your time your energy your mental space your heart <laughs> your body gone into your business many times you might make some money after a lot but you may not be able to enjoy it if you don't even if you have a system around you unless you have a system that allows you to be duplicatable where you get to empower other people to become business owners that work in tandem so that when you do well when they do well you do well and vice versa um your business owner I mean, fortunately, I benefit from an opportunity where I get to empower business owners to have an asset that can provide a lifestyle for themselves, you know, in an e-commerce space, in addition to my business, Think Premium JA. And, you know, I get to benefit from mentorship and coaching, <laughs> but many people don't have that. And, you know, that's where recipro reciprocity is so important because you need to, you need help. No man is an island. You need help. You need staff members. Every any business need for a crew people. Any business needs to sell something. So you always need people. You need people to buy your products. You need people to help you sell your products. And you need people to help you run your business. You need to open yourself up to receive. You need to open yourself up to good word of mouth. You need to open yourself up to new resources, new avenues. Start conversations. You know, some of the best help me get are from random conversations to start with people. Don't be afraid. Put them up your mouth. Serious. Open up your mouth and ask for help. <laughs> That's why God gave you a mouth <laughs> to ask. So you can receive. Isn't it crazy? <laughs> so, anyway, that's it for me. I hope it helps. Um, Kuma said I was going to make this video short. Anyway, um, just a gentle reminder, I do have a digital uh, marketing company called Think Premium GA. And in my company, I offer social media marketing services, email marketing, blogging, other forms of sales copywriting. I have two online courses. I offer business consultation services to help businesses to close more sales and achieve their strategic goals. Plus, I have an online store where I sell products that you're likely to need in the next two weeks anyway, like all-purpose cleaner, laundry detergent, makeup, skincare products like lotions, bath so body wash deodorants to um multivitamins which you can take for as low as 70 jamaican dollars a day a wide variety of supplements meal replacement shakes protein bars etc so if you need further information reach out to me using the context below and please if this video added value to you like share comment and subscribe Comment down below. Let me know what you liked, what you disliked. And if you got value from the video, please share it with somebody else that you think would gain value from it too. It would really help. And I mean, at the end of the day, I'm aiming to minister about God through business. So 
if you share with more people, that, you know, that would help assist in doing that. <laughs> right? So yeah, that's it for me. Take care. Have a wonderful day. And remember to never stop dreaming. Goodbye.